Welcome to a new video and in today's one we're looking at the Subaru Crosstrek and no this isn't a Subaru with gold rims and a huge engine with turbos that are whooshing and this exhaust that you can hear from 10 kilometers away that's not this but what you're looking at here is a sensible crossover SUV with four-wheel drive that can probably take you anywhere Now this Crosstrek is powered by a 2 litre 4 cylinder boxer engine that Subarus are known for. Um, it is naturally aspirated so it's not turbocharged and you've got all the power going through a CVT transmission. Now on paper that doesn't sound very good and it doesn't sound very Subaru-esque but in real life when you're driving it, it all actually starts to make sense. Now you don't have a lot of power, you've got 115 kilowatts and 196 newton meters of torque. But like I've said, once you're driving it, it all harmoniously comes together. The power is delivered really nicely, it's delivered smoothly. The CBT, it's working quietly in the background. It's not making a lot of noise like a CBT normally would. So I'll give it that. And yeah, off the mark, the power is delivered well. But I think once you start to ask a lot of it in terms of going on an uphill or wanting to overtake at a high speed, you can then kind of feel it starts to go a little pup. But from your everyday, day-to-day -day commuting, this is more than enough power. And when it comes to fuel consumption, you'd think that because it's got a 2-litre boxer engine, it's not going to be that good. Well, it's actually not too bad. Um, thanks to the CVT, I can't believe I'm saying that, but thanks to the CVT, um, it's able to keep those revs quite low and to keep them quite neutral when you're driving and not having to kind of always go up and down like a normal transmission would. But you're able to get 7.2 liters per 100 k's, that's what they're claiming. Um, I'm currently sitting in about the 8 to 8.5, um, but I am testing it and I'm trying to see what the car has to offer. So I do think you might be able to get there if you're driving predominantly on the highways or long distances. I don't think that will be unrealistic. And then onto the name Crosstrek and maybe the reason why it's called that. So this is an adventure ready crossover SUV that's meant to be able to take you anywhere. Now I believe that you probably could go anywhere with this thanks to Subaru's four wheel drive system that they're renowned for which works perfectly. Um, and thanks to the various drive modes here, it's called X mode. So you've got different drive modes or pre-programmed drive modes that you can select from. Um, so it's like your gravel and grass and snow and mud and all of that stuff. So it's able to manage the traction accordingly depending on whatever surface you're on. And as I'm sure you could see, this car is standing pretty high. So your grind clearance is obviously one of the most important things when it comes to going off-road. And here you've got 220 mils of grind clearance all the way around. So getting around obstacles, going up hills, your departure angle and all of that sort of stuff is covered. You shouldn't have any issues with regards to scratching the car, bottoming out or anything like that. <laughs> and then onto the exterior design. And yeah, this thing is bold and it's in your face, but still undoubtedly an off-roader. You've got all the plastic cladding, you've got everything that just makes it look like it was born to be off-road. You've got some good looking daytime running lights and some pretty in-your-face styling here too with these vents that I don't even know if they work, but they're pretty cool. On this model, you've got 18-inch wheels and on the one below, you get 17-inch. And as we go down the side here, the cladding continues with some cool Crosstrek badging on the side. Another cool feature to this S model are the roof rails that are painted in grey, which I think is a nice touch. It just adds a little bit of premiumness to it. And when we make our way around the back, you'll see you've got these 3D looking C-shaped LED rear tail lights with a lot more black cladding just protecting the outer edges of the car. And then taking a closer look at the badges, you'll see here that it mentions it is all-wheel drive, which is pretty cool. And then while we're here at the back, we'll take a quick look into the boot. And yeah, because this is an all-wheel drive car, you're not gonna have a lot of space back here. You'll see that the boot sits really high. There isn't actually a lip here at all. It's completely flat, but what's good is that there is actually a full-size spare wheel in the back here. So when you are off-roading or doing something adventurous, just know that you do have peace of mind of a full-size spare wheel. And unfortunately, there is no power tailgate, so you're gonna have to bring out the old elbow grease and close this by yourself. So that's everything about the outside of the Crosstrek. Let's take a quick look at the inside. And here on the inside, you'll find a full leather steering wheel with all the buttons that are very, very easy to use. 
and here in the center you have your infotainment which is in a portrait style which is quite cool everything's laid out nicely and it's probably one of the easiest infotainment systems to use everything is just laid out simply and there's nothing complicated about it at the top you've got some quick menus to slide through You've got very basic menu options here in the middle with quick access to your start-stop system as well as some car information like the angles, the tilts, where the power is coming from, etc. But most importantly is they have actually separated the climate control from the main system here too. And because it's one of those features that needs to be used regularly, they've dedicated a section of the screen to that. And then down at the bottom you'll find a charger as well as a USB and USB-C slot. But don't look there because we've got some piano black that's a magnet for scratches. You've got quite a big little cubby underneath the armrest. You've got two drinks holders and you've got some space in the doors there too. You've got soft touch materials and some carbon effect details going across the dash. And if you opt for the S model, you also get a sunroof as well as this high res 360 camera system. Now, although it is really great, I do feel like the lenses are like fish eyes. So it is quite rounded, but hey, beggars can't be choosers, right? And then taking a quick look at the back seats to see if this man can fit in the back here. I'm 1.87 meters tall and I do have quite a bit of legroom in front of me. That's in my driving position. And then from a headroom point of view and because the headliner does have a bit of an indent in it, I seem to be okay. Your passengers in the rear are lucky enough to have a standard USB and a USB Type-C. And I must say, I'm pretty comfortable back here. These seats are actually really, really comfy. And what would a back seat review be if we didn't look for cup holders? And we've got two over here. Okay, back to Greg in the car. And then onto one of the highlights of this car for me, and that's its eyesight safety system. So you've got cameras on the outside that are monitoring the road and the road surfaces and whatever's going on out there. So it's got forward collision warning. It's got everything that you're going to need to keep yourself safe while you're driving. Um, you've got the automatic cruise control. You've got rear cross traffic alert. You've got all of those systems that are going to help keep you safe while you're driving. And when it comes to the automatic cruise control, you've also got the built-in lane departure, lane centering, and all of those systems. Um, but what's nice is you're actually able to toggle off and on the automatic steering for yourself just by tapping a button on the steering wheel. So you don't have to always have it trying to steer for you. The option is up to you and you can use it as and when you need it. But one of my favorite things about the safety systems inside here is the attention assist. So the car knows exactly when you're not paying attention to the road it knows exactly when you're doing something you shouldn't be doing and it's going to warn you about that every time another standout feature for me in this car is its ride quality and that comes down to its suspension which isn't super stiff so you've got quite a bit of play in it and that allows for a very comfortable drive so speed humps imperfections in the road and everything like that are handled with absolute ease and it's one of the most comfortable cars I've probably driven in the last few months and I've driven a few and then onto the pricing of this Crosstrek and here in South Africa you've got two choices to choose from you've got the L and the S now the L goes for 580,000 Rand and the S goes for 670,000 Rand now your main difference is there is obviously just comes down to the spec you're getting the same engine you're getting the same displays you're getting the same four-wheel drive system but you're missing out on things like the sunroof, some of the safety tech, the full leather seats, and you're getting a smaller set of rims. You're getting 17 inch, where the S model gets 18 inch wheels. But that's just the pricing. Now, if you wanna see if you can afford this car from a month to month point of view, I'll do a quick breakdown of the cost of ownership. Now, if you're looking at getting yourself a Subaru or a Crosstrek, then go check one out on changecars.co.za. They're a website that sells new and used cars. They're approved by Discovery Insure as well as all of the automotive manufacturers as well. But that's not all. They also vet every dealer that wants to sell cars on their website to give you peace of mind knowing that when you buy a car from them, you're getting the highest quality. And then onto the verdict, the GDR test. Should you get it? Should you drive it? Or should you remove it from your list of cars that you're looking at? I'd say go and get it. This Subaru Crosstrek has actually surprised me. Um, I didn't think I would like it as much as I have, but I think I've come to like how harmonious the entire system works, from the CVT to the engine to just everything inside you, including the safety systems and how intuitive they are and how non-intrusive they are. It's a really good all-around car. Not to mention how versatile it is. You've got huge grind clearance. You've got four-wheel drive. You can literally go anywhere in this Crosstrek. That's pretty cool.
So thanks for watching another Greg Dennis review. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit more about the new Subaru Crosstrek. And if you did, please will you drop a like below. And if you want to see more videos like this and other automotive content, then please make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss it. And until then, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.